Michaela buys furniture to the value of 10,000 Rand. She borrows the money on 1 February from a financial institution that charges that interest rate compounded monthly. Michaela agrees to pay monthly installments of 450. The loan allows Michaela to start paying equal monthly installments from 1 August. Okay. Calculate the total amount owing to the financial institution on 1 July. Okay, so let's break this down. Um, on 1 February, Michaela borrows money. Borrows money. Now, normally, if you've watched all the videos on present value and even on the future value, when do we normally make our first payments? Normally, it's after one month. So usually, we would make our first payment over here. Okay, then it would be 1 April, you'd make your next payment. So this would be your normal, or normally, your first payment. This would normally be your second payment, third payment, whoops, June, sorry, 1 July, and 1 August. Okay, now Michaela only starts making her face first payment over here. So how many payments did she miss? Well, you mustn't count this one because normally we start over here. So she misses one, two, three, four, five. She misses the first five payments. Now remember, if you've watched videos on present value, the value of the loan that she took out is 10,000 Rand. That institution, like the bank, for every, every payment that you're missing, remember that that loan amount is gonna keep growing, okay? So that 10,000 Rand is no longer gonna be 10,000 Rand when she decides to make her first payment. She's gonna log into her APSA or her FNB account, see that the loan amount is no longer 10,000 Rand. Maybe it's now gonna be 10,600, for example, because she hasn't started paying but the bank's not gonna wait for you, they're gonna start adding on that interest, okay? So the first question says, calculate the total amount that she owes to the financial institution. So obviously it's not 10,000 Rand anymore. So we're just gonna use the grade 11 formula and we're gonna compound that 10,000 Rand for 9.5%, I like to write it like that, compounded monthly. And how many payments did she miss? Five. Okay, and so let's see. 10,402 Rand and 15 cents. So you mustn't say, yeah, but Kevin, we're starting here on 1 February and then it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six months until 1 August. It doesn't work like that, guys. You gotta think about how it normally, how they normally do it in the real world. So in the real world, you normally start after one month. So they don't penalize you for not starting there and then they're only looking at the payments that you miss, okay? So because she's starting here, they're not gonna also count that part there. So the missed payments is five. And so this is how much the new loan amount is um, when Michaela decides to start paying. This next question says, how many months will it take Michaela to pay back the loan? Okay, so we now know that we're not gonna start over here now. We're now gonna look at from when she starts paying, okay? So we're gonna use the present value formula, which is P equals to X one minus one plus I to the negative N over I. So now we're no longer using 10,000. We're now using 10,402.15. The monthly payment is 450. The interest rate is 9.5%, so 0 0.095. Okay, I'm not gonna fit that in. And now, okay, so the number of payments, we don't know. So we can actually just leave that as the unknown. And then we could just say 0 0.095 over 12. You see, so it's actually an easy question. Um, just don't use 10,000 because that's no longer valid. You have gotta make it valid from where we're starting. And now we're starting to make our payments here. So this is the amount you would use. And they're not saying like in what year would she finish or whatever, they just wanna know how many months. And so you can literally just go work out the value of N now and yeah, so let's do that. So what I would do is I would multiply this part over to the left and I would divide this part on the left as well. 
And so that would end up giving us 10402.15 multiply 0 0.095 over 12 divide 450. And that's then equal to one minus, now this I'll type on my calculator, the one plus 0 0.095 over 12, but leave it as a fraction, okay? It's very sensitive because we're probably going to use logs just now and your answers can change a lot if you start rounding off now. So leave it like that, okay? Type this in your calculator as well. It'll also give you a fraction. Let's see what that'll be. Oh, it doesn't give us a fraction. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to double check, 0 0.095 over 12, 450. Okay, then just write all the decimals. Don't want to be rounding off at this stage. Okay, now um, I'm going to take this unit to the left and then bring this to the right. And so now we end up getting um, 2419 over 2400 to the negative n. We just brought this over to the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to get that. Now I'm just going to quickly pop that on my calculator. And so we end up with 2419 over 2400 to the negative n equals to 0 0.816999213. Okay, now it's logs. So with logs, you take your exponent, you make it equal to log of your base. Your base always stays your base. Whether you're going from exponential to log or log to exponential, your base stays your base. So this was the base, and now it's still in the base position. So that's a nice thing to remember. And then 0 0.816999213. Okay, so it would look like, whoops, what did I just do? Like that. Okay, so let's go type that in. Okay, so that's going to give us negative n equals to negative 25.63. And so n would be 25.63. So what does that mean? Is it going to be 25.63 months? Well, no, you can't make 25.63 payments. So she's going to have to make 26 payments, where the last payment will probably, well, definitely will be a little bit less than the normal. I'm surprised they didn't add 7.2.4, asking us to calculate what that fi final payment amount would be. We're lucky. This next question says, what is the balance of the loan immediately after Michaela has made the 25th payment? This last one says, what is the balance of the loan? That actually just means outstanding balance. So I'll start with the present value method. You only need to do one in the exam though, okay? And then I'll show you the future value. So with present value, this N value is payments you still need to make. Okay, so remember when we calculated n, I said 25.63, but when you use this method, you actually have to use the non-rounded method, the non-rounded value. So 6315128. So it says after we have made the 25th payments. So what you then do is you just say minus 25, and that'll give you the number of payments or the part of the payment that still needs to take place. I know we can't make that many payments, but that's the portion still left, and that is what we use here for this formula. And so you're gonna say 450, one minus, one plus, uh, the interest rate was 9.5%, and we are gonna say 0 0.6315128, and that is all gonna be over 0 0.095 over 12. If we calculate that, we get 282 Rand, and 36 cents. Now, when you do future value, your outstanding balance is, you gotta do two parts. It's the loan amount minus your future value of your payments. So your loan amount is just using the grade 11 formula, A equals to P1 plus I to the N. So that's just gonna be um, your original loan amount, which was not the 10,000, you gotta use the 10,000, it's from when we started paying. We know that we've done 25 payments from that moment. And then um, one plus 0 0.09, okay, I'm definitely gonna run out of space. Okay, I'm gonna erase the present value because you get the idea. So it's here, future value, 
Okay, so we said that your outstanding balance is always going to be your loan amount, whatever that's become, minus your uh, future value. So that's going to be you're using the grade 11 um, A equals to P1 plus I to the N formula, and then this is going to be your future value. Now, with this formula, we use, the N is the number of payments that are already completed. It's not the number of payments you still need to complete, it's the number of payments that have already been completed. Whereas when we used the present value, then it was different. Okay, so it's gonna be uh, the original or the, the, the loan amount when we started paying. We've made 25 payments at this part. Our, our monthly payment is 450 and that's 25 payments. Okay, and that's it. So now you can just go type that on the calculator. And that gives us two 82.36. Sometimes it doesn't give the exact same answer as the present value method. Sometimes it's a little, a few cents off. And there we go. Now some of you might be thinking, Kevin, why aren't we, why aren't we now taking this answer and compounding with one more month? Ah, that's a good question. That's only if they asked us to calculate, let's say they added a new question, 7.2.4, calculate the value of the final payment then you would have to realize that this number here is your outstanding balance after 25 payments. Your 26th payment is gonna happen in one month and that is where we would then compound using the grade 11 formula for one month. Maybe you've seen videos of mine like that before, but this question isn't asking that. They just wanna know what is the outstanding balance immediately after that 25th payment.